Hey everybody. So today we're doing something a little different. I've been here before. I came here this summer to Parsons Farms and um, we were looking at all the good stuff this summer. But now we're here since we've been talking so much about all the pumpkins and the squashes and that awesome Hubbard squash we made, the Zuka the Zuka the other day. Um, I figured I would come out here and actually talk to the farmer and learn a little bit more about these pumpkins. And since we're outside, we're kind of being a little loose on the mask thing here, but you know, I got my Italian mask on, but anyway. So, okay, so I'm here with Paul Parson, who, Parson, Parson or Parsons? Parsons. Parsons, okay. I didn't know if that was like the plural or the end of the name. <laughs> but anyway, so we're gonna talk about all these pumpkins. So the other day I made that, uh, that soup with the Hubbard squash. Now tell me about these Hubbard squashes. So they're over here. So these, we got a whole rack of these babies. So there's orange ones. Yep, these are the kind of red Hubbard here. I used the red one. The red one? Yeah. The, red, uh, the blue one's typically a little bit bigger of a squash. Uh, and then you have the, the red ones, they're going to be a little smaller and a little easier to cook with. So smaller as in size, but as not size. necessarily. Um, and do they have more, more or less meat, or is it just the overall size? Overall size. Okay. Overall size. Are there any difference in the taste? Um, I don't think so. No. Uh, have you cooked with the blue before? I haven't tried the blue one. I only tried the Hubbard the other day for the first time, mm -hmm. and it was delicious. We made a we made a, a squash and chickpea mm -hmm. soup, and then I put a little bit of pasta in it. Oh my god, it was so good. Well, essentially on the inside, they should be identical. On the inside. Oh yeah. And they're known for their uh, storage. You can put these in your basement, keep them all winter if you like. Really? Well, it's good to know. Yeah. Cook them and buy. Um, where are these typically grown? Typically, uh, they're grown all over the, the East Coast. Yeah. Um, they, we grow them right here on our farm. They love the sandy soil. Nice. Um, we usually plant these in June, mid June, yeah. and then we start to harvest them about mid September. Oh, cool! That's pretty neat. All right, so now you've got now these these here are your stereotypical Halloween pumpkins. Yes. Are these edible? So we got the white. I always love these white ones. Um, yep. I, these, like, I like to tell people anything's edible, whether it tastes good is a little bit different. So um, what do these taste like? These, I've never had one of these white ones before. We typically cook with pumpkins that are known to be, yeah. uh, you know, to cook with. I would imagine it'd be about the same as a regular uh, sugar pumpkin. Probably about the same. Um, and that's these ones? These here. Yeah, this is more of a sugar pumpkin here. That okay. size, yeah. So is it the, the size or is it the shape that makes it's it more, a sugar more pumpkin? more the size. Yeah. More the size. Yep. Alright, so like these round ones, mm -hmm. they're the same as this? Different variety. Oh, okay. So each, each seed you plant in the uh, spring is going to produce a certain size pumpkin, certain shape pumpkin, certain uh, color. They're just a dip, but they're, di they're different of breed, not different not breed. that it's when you plant them. Not when you plant them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these ones would be sweeter? Yes. Okay. Yep. So these little, let's pull one out here. Yeah, you do it. That's a typical pie pumpkin there. Typical pie pumpkin, mm -hmm. so. A little bit smaller. And uh, so those are pretty sweet? They're pretty sweet, but not as good as your Hubbards or your other pumpkins over here, the right. uh, fairy tale. Now, what about the giant ones? Are they good to cook with? I don't suggest it because there's a lot of waste to those. They're hollow on the inside. Yeah. Um, they're not as dense. And Aren't they? They're a lot. I, I cooked them one. They're really watery. Yeah, they're real watery. You got a lot of. And they're stringy. Mm -hmm. They're stringy. So, but the flavor was okay. Just, yeah. It's a, a little milder, I guess, because it's watery. I would say because it's watery. Okay. And All again, right. these are these are bred for to put on your doorstep. Mm. Not great for the flavor. The squirrels like them. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go over here and see these other cool pumpkins that have really cool names. So, what are these here? We got all these awesome big pumpkins here. Yep. So, what's this big green one? This is called a fairy tale. Fairy tale. Mm -hmm. And this, so will, a, this will lose the green and it's going to turn completely tan. I should have some tanner ones out here. Let's go outside and we're going to look at some tan fairy tale pumpkins. Starting to lose it here. Right. All right, here we go. See that one? All right, now we're out in the sunshine here. Woo! All right, so, whoops! We're going to have a pumpkin a pumpkin avalanche. All right, so that's a fairy tale. That's a fairy tale, yeah. So, so is this green one here? So is this one, this one, this one here. And so those are fairy tale because they look like what Cinderella stepped out of. Yep. But then exactly. you have a Cinderella pumpkin. We have a Cinderella, which is right here. So which why is that the, one Cinderella? Because that one looks more Cinderella-ish. It's just... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty funny, but so how do those taste the Cinderellas versus these? Um, this one's going to be a little more watery, like you were talking earlier. Uh -huh. A little more stringy. This one's going to be a lot more dense. Okay, um, so, so the these, fairy these tale. These pumpkins are solid all the way through. They're going to be a, 
a little harder to cut through. You might want to put those in the oven for a little bit, then pull them out and then cut them. Oh, okay. That's a thought. Yeah. Um, so, and these are how, like, sweet, like, say, com so compared to a Hubbard as far as taste. This is that one I know. more like a sweet potato, uh, where it's going to be almost a little, we've got a red color on the inside. Yeah. It's going to be uh, very good. Oh, okay. Cool. That sounds good. Yeah. What's this great yeah. big giant one? That is a Cinderella, but it's going to be on the bigger side. Look at that. So, are the bigger ones like that, are they going to be tougher? Tougher, yeah. Yeah. They're going to be a little tougher. All right. Look at the Smurf pumpkin. That's better. That's more blue there. Look at it's all blue. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. So, what do those taste like? I've never eaten one, but they are going to be pretty hard. Uh, I would say they'd be similar. I, I've not eaten one. No. All right, well, we're gonna I'm have wrong. to. I, just don't, I don't eat them all. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> we have to try one. We're gonna have to cook up some of these and bring them to the farmer. He grows them. We cook them. <laughs> What's this knobby one there? That's a, another variation of, of a uh, Smurf. Oh, okay. Or porcelain doll. Porcelain doll. I love the names of these pumpkins. This is a porcelain doll. Okay. So, of course, that's like, like skin color. Mm hmm And do you know anything about the cookingness well, and I'm taste of those? It's going to be very similar to a Smurf. Okay. So, I guess we're going to have to test You're it out and see. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is really cool. Now, um, really quick, there's... Whoops. I'm dropping my thing. There's one over here that um, Brittany was telling me about. Okay. I'll leave my this big one right here. Mm -hmm. She said this was a good one to cook with. Carnival squash. Carnival. Carnival squash. Yep. Okay, carnival squash. Yep. So that's, look at those. Those are cool. Real meaty, you know, similar to like your neck pumpkin. Okay. It's, uh, you have a small amount of seeds here and then all this in here. So it's not so, and what do these taste like? These are a little milder. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And now these are just gourds. These are, this is going to be a variation of your, uh, the one you eat over there, the Red Hubbard. Uh -huh. But these guys are bred for decoration and they're going to have the bumps on them. That's why we call them the Red Warty Gourds. So. But they're not edible. Like, again, they're edible, but they're not. See, Aldrey always says gourd. that gourds are not edible. All right, so here we go. Here, these are gourds here that are not edible. Anymore. Okay. And, and then, and then uh, let's look at these down like here. like nothing in them. Yeah. Now I'm going to grab my cart here real quick. Okay. So yeah. your gooseneck gourds are bred for really bird houses. And these are going to harden up, and then in the inside of these, these are going to be like kind of pissy, like I would say. Okay. And just not at all. So, what do you do? You let these just dry out? You let these dry out. These are as soon as you pick these, they start to dry out. Yeah. As you can see, this one right here is, oh, is wow. drying out already. That's cool. And it'll it'll dry completely out, and then it'll get uh, nice and hard, and, and you'll be able to hear the seeds inside. Yeah. And you can just drill a hole in them. Usually, about after first of the year, they'll be ready to. Oh, really? And then you just make the holes in them and you can hang them up and yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Some people uh, stain them, some people spray paint them, huh. do whatever you like. Alright, what about those over there? Are these those guys? Those? Yeah. And these are brand new this year, uh -huh. so I haven't, uh, this is the first year I've seen these pumpkins. Uh, so these it's called, called an Americana. 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 Yep. But it's got an A at the end, so maybe it's like, you know, Italian, they just called it American. Who knows? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Americana. Yeah. So you don't know anything about these? I have no, as no far as clue cooking. about these. You can All try right. these, but I'm going to say these are going to be bred more for decoration. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll have to try a small one. So what's riper, the lighter color or the brighter color? I'm going to say the this one here would be more riper, I would say. Okay. I'm cool. not very familiar with those. Okay. Yep. We'll have to look that up. All right, so I think we've hit all the pumpkins and all the squashes, right? Yep. The other stuff, I mean, spaghetti squash and acorn squash and butternut squash we're familiar with. Oh, you know what? What's that little mini, like, butternut squash looking one that um, your dad and your sister just, honey I mean, your wife were just telling me about? Yeah, honey nut. Honey nut. These, these are honey new this year, too. It's the first year I've honey seen these nut. as well. Those yeah, they're cute. supposed to be really, really sweet. And I'm, I'm <laughs> assuming that these are going to be the same texture as the fairy tale down there. They're going to be a little okay. redder inside, right. a little oranger. That's what I'm going to assume. This is a little a honey nut instead of a <laughs> butternut. I don't know. I think honey nut has, I like the flavor, the sound of that better. All right. And then those are just, oh, those are the acorn squash. What's the difference between the yellow ones and the speckled ones? Any? Not on the inside. No? Just outside appearance. Okay. So again. there's the acorn squash, which are pretty typical in regular grocery stores and stuff. And then, of course, the spaghetti squash, which I love. So, yep. It's really good. I mix it with sometimes with... Um, with like angel hair pasta, so I'll like kind of make it half vegetable and half 
regular pasta and it works nice. out pretty good. So that's it. All right. Awesome. Thank Sounds you so good. much. Thank shake you. Your hand. All right. Thank All right. you. So thank you. this is Paul and come on to Parsons Farm Market if you're down here in what, what town are we actually in? We're in Dagsboro. We're in Dagsboro, Dagsboro, Delaware. So on Route 20. So anyway. Looks up. We're on Facebook. Looks yeah, up. I'm definitely going to share it. All right. Thank All right. You. Thank you so much for your help. So we're going to make some cool stuff. So what are we going to buy? We're going to buy... Oh, we're gonna buy a bunch of stuff. So I already have one of those big crookneck squashes. I'm gonna walk around outside. While I'm outside, I'm gonna keep my mask off. But I've got it right here. If I go inside, I'll put it on. So anyway, so we're out here by ourselves. So we're gonna check out some of these. We're gonna get us definitely a Hubbard. And I really want one of these carnival squashes. These are pretty cool. So these big carnival squashes. So let's get one of these. Whoops, let's see. Um, so should I get the biggest one? Or the long, actually, you know what? I bet you because this is this one's got a nice long neck to it. Look at the size of this. That's my hand. This thing is like, oh, let's see if I can. Let me see if I can prop that. Okay, so we got this. Look at the size of this baby. It's like a baby. Okay, let's see if I can put this in the cart here. Okay, you guys remember that's a carnival, a carnival squash. Before I spoke to Paul here with you guys, I talked to his dad, Preston, and he was explaining to me how these green ones, these ones are the not ripe ones, or actually his wife Brittany was telling me. The green ones are not ripe yet, so these will ripen and these will last well into the winter. The ones that are more orange, um, so they're orange-ish, um, are more ripe. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to get a ripe one. <clears throat> you know what? I think I'm just going to look at this. Look at this cool chair here. Whoops. I think I'm going to sit in this cool chair and chat with you guys for a minute. Oh, isn't this fun? Oh, this is really comfy. It's like a tall thing, but it does have a place for my feet. So anyway, so I'm going to get one of these princess ones. Is it prince? Was it princess? No. Cinderella. That's what it was. I'm going to get a Cinderella one, and I'm going to get a couple of these um fairy tale ones one that we can cook now or soon and you know what i really want i want one of those smurf pumpkins look at this this is so cool so this is what i'm sitting here looking at so that blue one right there in the front is a smurf and then there's all these other ones look at this there's just so many of them and then there's the whole place down there this is all and then watch this when i turn around all these different pumpkins and gourds and things so right there is the Hubbard's, those orange ones right there. Those are the Hubbard squashes, that's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get me a couple of the Hubbard's and um, we're going to really just have fun making pies and stuff and cookies. Oh, I have this awesome squash, Italian squash cookie that I'm going to, um, we're going to make one day soon. So obviously I'm not cooking right now because I decided to come out to the farm and learn about all these different ones. Because after I had that Hubbard squash, oh my goodness, it was so, I can't even, I can't even. So we're going to buy us some things and get to cooking. So anyway, all right, so I'm going to um, close down for now because I'm going to go finish doing my shopping and then go home and play with my recipes and decide what we're going to cook tomorrow. All right, so have a good day, everybody. Ciao.